Why do necromancers always look so angry? They have a resting lich face. What's going on YouTube? But today we're going to be talking about Telvar, how you turn it to gold and all the little bits and bobs and little thingamahoosins that you need to do to get that crack a lacking. It's very straightforward and we're going to be going into that today. Why are we talking about it? Well, the simplistic take is, is that sim simply Telvar, you're going to be getting lots of it because the mid-year mayhem event is going on right now, which means that you might be farming Telvar, you're going to be getting it in reward boxes, there's updated calendar rewards with Telvar. I believe you even have a chance to roll for 100,000 every time you open those boxes. So you might get a bunch and think to yourself, all right, Jake, what do I need to do with it? The answer is simplistically sweet. And we're going to talk about all that today and more. And I promise I will not blue ball you for long. This is just a quick reminder. You would be so kind to like and subscribe. And then we can jump on into the video. Step one, all you have to do is meander down here to the Imperial City. And you're going to be faced with a bunch of merchants. Now, these merchants will offer a wide assortment of things. The actual simplistic ones that I generally had always been pointing you guys to is the Hajaku runes. I think Hajaku runes are a great investment. Those of you who do not know, Hajaku runes are prism runes. Prism runes are basically runes that give you both mag, stam, and health when you put them onto a body piece inside of an enchantment. Very good for werewolves, very good for hybrid builds, very good for a lot of mag builds too, even stam builds, because with more hybridization, these things have just been going up and up and up. Right now on Xbox, these things I would say range for about 15 to 20,000, which is about a return of we'll say three to four gold per Telvar. So one Telvar, three to four gold. Now, obviously, if you play on PC, that is going to be significantly higher. You don't have to worry about these specific rates. But for those of us who don't play on PC, knowing the actual exchange rates is important. Because the Superb Imperial Reward is actually a very good alternative. Now, unfortunately, I lost my footage of myself opening a bunch of these. But basically, for 1500 Telvar you are rolling for a bunch of really good items, and they include all of the sets that are dropped in the Imperial City. So when you think about it like that, now remember, three to four gold per, so that's about 15,000 Telvar is going to, you know, it'll, it'll get you about 45,000 gold. But if you think about these, you're so you get one blue item or purple from here, you're going to be able to sell. What are the odds that you're going to be able to make a return of higher than three to four times? Now, obviously, if you, again, if you're on PC, these rates will be different, but the conversation is exactly the same. So, for example, I open one of these, I get an item. Let's say I get a Harbinger set piece, and I can sell that for 10,000 gold. Bing, bang, boom, throw it up there. Powerful assault, 10,000 gold. Off trait, off body, whatever, sticker book, 10,000 gold. Well, that's a rate of closer to seven to eight times, which is almost double the amount that you're getting from Hajaku runes. And also as a side note, while I do not suggest this at all on console, on PC, these waxed apothecaries parcels are also extremely good for you guys to roll for. So that is actually why I suggest this coffer right here for 1500. Because you can talk to these other vendors here. They've got some other interesting things too. You can buy guaranteed sets. Because, for example, these Imperial Physique probably sell, you know, 10 to 20,000. And that would be a rate, a rate of two to four times. And that is, you know, lovely jubbly. We love that. But the problem is, is that you could get that already with Hajaku Ruin. So, yeah, these sets are all, you know, nifty difty. I just worry that in the long run, you're not going to make your money back. But if you think about the math on getting those small items, it is significantly better. Now, the alternative too is, say for example, you could pick a set such as Powerful Assault for 3,000 where you're guaranteed to roll for it because there's higher returns. However, I would just remind you that you could still sell all of the sets. There are people who are still completing the sticker books for every set so yes, if you want to get the Powerful Assault equipment box, 
you're going to be rolling for some extremely valuable items, but you are risking getting a higher cost to entry and you're not going to have as much inventory to sell, which also might be a good thing, you know, depending on how many guild slots you have. So you got to kind of keep that in mind too, because you're getting 10 powerful assault items guaranteed. The other method, let's say you buy 20, well, those are 20 all potentially different sets, different items. So it's going to be easier to move. Remember my flea market example that I bring up? It's always good to have a variety of items versus kind of dumping everything into one thing. Not to say you can't do it. A lot of people would suggest this. I too am one of those people that has done it before. Is it a good gold maker? Yes. And I feel a little silly dilly because I lost the freaking footage of me opening a whole bunch of these. But um, you can imagine it. And what I would say is, is that footage was taken 30 days ago when I was testing different Telvar methods. Every single item that I got from this Telvar merchant has sold. Not a single one has listed. So even the ones that I listed up, I was like, I'll ah, just get it out of here. It's 8,000 gold. That's still an amazing return on something that would otherwise be completely worthless and beats out the Hijaka runes. But these are the items that I want you guys to be considering when you're in the conversation of Telvar. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, Jake, how do I Telvar farm? Well, I got a video for that that you guys can head on down there and watch. But, dear friends, that is going to wrap up the old video compartmentalization for you. So, a quick reminder that we are still doing the giveaway drawings, three giveaway drawings for the month of May. I almost forgot what month we were in for a second. You can see the previous winners from last month. The winners are my favorite comment of the month, a random subscriber, and then a random comment in the exact order that they appear on screen. So, all you have to do is subscribe and comment to be entered and uh, it always helps if you like the video too. I always appreciate that. They're doing the stream team applications right now. I got a cute cat I'm petting right now who's too sleepy to get up and say hi to the camera. But I promise that she's there. And I promise that if you like and subscribe, she'll be happier. So help me help her. But that's going to wrap up the video. Thank you guys again for watching. And I will catch you guys later. Bye, guys. Remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Oh, you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails! Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you. It's always funny that, like, in the comment section, people will always point out different things. Like, some people will point out that this is a Fallout bobblehead, that this is a Norwich jersey, that that's a Liverpool jersey. And truthfully, I could try to focus the camera in more. But I almost like it to be kind of more obscure because that way when it looks horrendous, it's harder to tell um, what all these things are. And it looks a little less, you know, crazy because the camera's focused like here as opposed to back there. But yeah, I don't know why I went on that tangent. But I just think it's funny that somebody would be like, I like the Fallout bobblehead. Why do you support two teams? Which team is this right here? What are these posters? What's the poster behind you? What does it say on the chair? I always find it funny when people point out on the screen. So I don't know. It's a random tangent for the post outro. So, uh. Thanks again. Peace.